And then also, it's Eve Denver. It's the end of the day. All my books are gone. So we're just going to chat. We're going to hang out because like, I, these individuals are so fucking talented. I, I, I am so happy that I'm sharing this with you all. And like, the vibe is just so good. And so um, I hope you all are able to uh, dig into this as well. And so, you know, just to just keep this off, we all introduce yourselves and then um, and let us know what were you doing before you get up. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got time to think. <laughs> all right, well, hi everyone. My name is Dana. Um, I'm from Union, violinist, vocalist, uh, producer, designer, um, entrepreneur, and all the word. Artist is also a thing. <laughs> um, all the things, uh, Web3 as well. And um, yeah, what was I doing before Web3? Pretty much what I was doing now, but with a little less motivation. So I feel like Web3 was an opportunity for me to tap in to the things I was doing before, which is just to create and um, spread messages through all of that. And we really do with through art and healing and technology and education and um, humanity. You know, so that's really what propelled the whole mission forward. So, yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Sassy Black. I'm a singer, songwriter, producer, actress, screenwriter, some other things I can't remember, but it's not necessary right now. I'm based in Seattle, Washington. And yeah, before Web3, I was so insane. I was just doing my thing, making music, traveling, touring into the pandemic. And I went to live streaming on Twitch, um, IG, and just uh, got to my mother and funk, which is my coined genre of music. <laughs> so if somebody else says they're doing it, they took it from me. And um, now it's a way after. What's going on? My name is Jesse Boyden III. Um, I make music and I do art things with my friends. Sometimes. People like enjoy it, and I like that. You know, um, I've been doing this for a very long time, and uh, it's beautiful to see independence transition into the web free space, and us have access to the valuing ourselves in a real way, and not being constricted or controlled by a machine. And so I celebrate that, and I've been about that for a long time. So you know. You dodge gatekeepers as much as you can, but I feel within the space there's less and less of that. So we get to celebrate ourselves and feed ourselves at the same time. You know, so you just mentioned independent, and um, I'm just kind of like curious. Here, here's another question for you all, a two part question. One, tell me how you feel about record labels. Two, um, kind of like a when or how or what, why did you get started making music? Like sharing your music there. We can go back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> um, hmm, record labels. Well, you know, I think the music industry has changed so much based on technology, as far as MP3 streaming is concerned, and, and you know, going from CDs, going from vinyls to CDs to Spotify, iTunes, and all these things. Um, and I don't know, we, they've always positioned the artists in a space where we weren't necessarily allowed to educate ourselves in the business aspect of things. Um, and there's like a, kind of like an invisible curtain that was up, and it's still up, you know. So that's how I feel about it. Like it's just like, you don't care about educating yourself on certain aspects, and you, you know, just only want these superficial material, you know, things to see from what you do, then you can do okay. But if you want to create a real impact and you want to ultimately influence people, you know, who are inspired by you to do the same thing, which is educate themselves on both the, you know, the artistic side but also the business side, then you know, labels are probably not your best bet. But I always say you gotta infiltrate to overtake. So that's the thing. Um, and as far as the uh, second part of the question was why did I get to the delivery? Yeah. 
Yeah, so I mean, I've always been kind of nerdy a little bit. I, I don't like, you know, I'm a little nerdy, I ain't gonna lie. I'm a nerdy motherfucker. Man. So, <laughs> so we've kind of been tapped in and trying to find the biggest ways to release my music and trying to find ways to market myself that didn't cost a lot of dollars that, and, and bring awareness to what I want to talk about when I, when I want to celebrate. And technology kind of helped me do that. So, I mean, this is just a continuation of that. You know? So, you got my space, you got Twitter, you got IG, you got Facebook, you got all these different things that brought you access and brought these people to you, you know. So, Web3 is just literally, you know, the super sane version of that, I'd say. So, I was like, sure. What's next? If this is, if they say Web19 next, and we, we're going to go to Web19 next. I love that. Yeah, you know, um, labels are an interesting thing. I like owning my music, though. So um, that's most important to me these days. So I think about that a lot, like ownership of myself, my spirit, my creativity. Um, so yeah, I think I'm, I'm going to be here with that. Speak to my friends, you know what I'm saying? Just gonna uh, mosey on down and forward. Um, but that I got no web three because I like owning myself and my creativity and my spirit and things like that. And, you know, inspired by Latasha's journey and um, like literally she's the person who onboarded me and through Zoratopia and one on one and everything like that. And just seeing other people like myself doing well in the space and people I actually knew no one about. Um, that was really magical because they had already been doing the work for years. And so to see people who I knew were putting in the work for like over a decade doing well in this space and it meant a lot to me. And so I just I am also a nerd and uh, you know I'm an electronic musicians. I make beats and I make everything I make to me and I say I write and do all this other crazy stuff like you know, Star Trek and Star Wars. So Web3 actually only made sense to me because it's just taking all of my music to that next level and like taking my community building skills to that next level basically because there's so much more opportunity here at these early stages where we can create something that is sustainable, that feels nice, that we can create these spaces that do feel nice and change kind of like the dynamics of power to some degree, which I've seen a lot of black people and black people of color working in places of power at the blockchain. Myself, I work in a blockchain based company right now too. So you know seeing those dynamics being changed is really important to me. So being able to invest in that and invest in the future right now, because I remember hearing about Bitcoin and being like that's weird. And you know hearing about crypto and like that sounds like death. And just being like, I don't know about that. You know? And so now like taking the next steps outside of fear to be able to embrace myself and to support and onboard other people into something that can be sustainable and is actually showing those sustainable qualities. Yes, definitely. Um, I have so much of that. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, I mean, labels are tricky. You know, I talk about them like a college loan. Like, you know, you can have this opportunity to, like, you know what I mean? Shout out Sally Mae. Basically, you know, you have this million dollar deal and you have to make sure that you pay it all back. You know what I mean? If you don't get that in the micro pennies from speed streaming, then, like, that becomes an expense instead of an opportunity. You know, I mean, it's just nice because it does dangle the, like, glamour of fame and, like, you know, this materialistic perspective of, like, what, perspective of, like, what music is. And what that actual like impact would be, because the impact is more than just like, you know, it could be deeper than just like a trend, just than like a style. So labels are very much like limit your creative freedom, you know what I mean? And um, your message at that. Because I know like more socially relevant topics, social justice, climate change, all these things that you like said is controversial and being spoken about in music that are mainstream. So there's opportunities to actually take control of the narrative and what we want to put into our music and the message we want to spread. So yeah, labels I feel like limit the freedom. So that's not for me. <laughs> I feel like web three creates this level of freedom that um you know you do have more um control of what's going on with the things that you create. You know, I mean there's no reason a label should take a percentage of the music that you created or if they have other people create it for you and you have no creative say in it. You know, just to fit a trend. So there's a lot of dynamics within that. And so I feel like, you know, this book is actually, it was that light to me instead of, you know, like, here's the fame. It's more like, here's the freedom to me. So 
Um, Web3 allows you know the community to actually build their opportunities to come from your actual story and your experience. You know, you're not limited to what the media wants to, you know, like frame you as. So yeah. <laughs> All right, and so you had mentioned uh, fear, right? Like there, there's this, there's a sense of fear, like with going to the unknown, um, and also new infrastructure, new technologies. Like it's streaming, but it's not what it is, but it's different. You know, oh, and you see the transactions, you know what's happening to you. What do you do? Um, so, you know, there's a sense of fear, and then I think that it's probably like overwhelming for a lot of people. And so they start to do it, and then you, you see all these numbers, you see the cryptographic hash, you're trying to set the wall, and you're like, oh my god, I don't want to lose anything, so I'm just going to go back over here. So, um, what are some of the most difficult things that you have had to navigate with your journey into a theory um, as a musician? I think on top was just valuing myself. And that is what I do with every musician that I'm trying to onboard into the space. Like, and not just me, like, being like, you should do it, you should do it. As well as that, you're like, oh, I want to do it. But then, like, how will I ever sell anything? How will I, like, should I sell it at this point? Or how will anybody ever buy anything? And it's, like, one of the most depressing conversations to have, honestly, because you realize how brainwashed we've been as creators to devalue ourselves. Like, music is everywhere, so people instantly devalue it, like you're on hold at Walgreens and you hear the same old song, you know, you're like whatever, you're an elevator, you're like whatever, you're a car commercial, like whatever, you know what I'm saying, you're on the radio, you don't you take music for granted, and so it's instantly devalued in that sense, and then also the fact that, you know, like, for those who know, like there's like pay to play gigs and things like that, where people set you up, where there's a promoter who tells you you have to pay the money and where to perform at a club. So there's like so many systems in place to train artists to be valued their creativity. And so that's one of like the hardest conversations to have. It's like, why would they have to spend this much money on this? Why would they want to buy this? Why would they want to invest in this? Um, like, why can't music be a fine art? Why can't it be something that's how highly valued? We go to school for it, we study it, there's a theory to it. There's it's a whole science. It's science, it's it's math, it's like it's environment, it's all the things uh put together, you know what I'm saying? And we need it on a regular basis, you know. So like that's like one of the hardest conversations and what's the hardest thing for me is like I started with 2D art and then I put my first music and cheese out with one E. I'm like, yeah, I'm keep doing that because I said I spent my whole life writing songs. I spent my whole life studying this. So I think that's like the hardest thing because people are constantly asking me. And even after they made their own sales, even really, you know, seeing successful artists, like, will people buy this? Still, you know, I'm constantly having that conversation. Yeah, I think speaking to the fair thing, because I mean, I mean I'm picking that most successful, but speaking to this, the fair thing as far as being a black artist specifically, um, if you, even if you just think about being American and being black, and like I had a conversation with an artist the other day about travel. And it's like a lot of times people don't even leave where they're from, you know, and they don't know to. So they don't understand anything to look, they have nothing to look forward to, you know. So it's like I would say, he portrayed over it because I'm like, okay, if I want to be a painter and I want to be as big as, I don't know, Picasso or whatever the case may be, I probably want to go to where he was at, where he lived, walk around, chill at the coffee spot he used to kick it, I don't know, you know, like I would want to experience that fully in a way where it would inspire me to know what my value is based on something that I'm fighting for, that I'm going after. And I think as a black artist, it's really hard to, uh, to do that if you don't. You're not open minded, you know, and it's really hard to understand the importance of being open minded as an artist in a lot of spaces when you are valued in the way you are, like what Sassy's saying. So, for me, it's always been a fight to demand what it is I deserve, and this space makes it a community. Like, it's like an army fight. It ain't like a just me by myself, like, all right, so I'm gonna negotiate this contract. It's like, nah, hey, look, you about to drop this at this? Nah, nah, nah. drop this at this, make this now. I'm gonna do this this week, they're gonna do this, they just did this, they just sold that. It's like a synergy that is happening amongst a very large amount of people at a very fast rate. 
and it's beautiful to see because it's just creating more fearlessness within black artists, period. You know, and you transfer that over into the Web2 space. And so when you go to a meeting, you have talks with brands and partnerships and all these things, you understand where your value is. And I think that's the most important thing about this conversation. You know, it ain't even just about like, oh man, I just sold some shit for two weeks on lit. Like it's not it's not really about that. Like that's cool, but it's more so about like I sold something for two weeks. Girl who went on like twice as hard, sold something for three, and then he sold something for that much, and I got a, he got bought point one of mine, and I got point five of his, and it's like we're doing this thing where we're actually creating another fucking fireball that we never had been created because we didn't have a community conversation that like no one talks about what they get for shows. You'd be surprised, like I call one of the homies and be like, yo, what you got paid for the show? Be like, this I'm like, why would you do that? They, but they wouldn't know that because to them, they leave in their house. They get to do what they love, so it doesn't matter. But you know, you fight for what you fight for as long as you fight for it, you need, you need, a little, you need some help. You know, and I think this is what this is it's just like a lot of help. You know, it's beautiful. Wow, yeah, oh my gosh, no, this is just alpha <laughs> right now. Um, everything that everyone's saying, um, my key, right? <laughs> It's the energy for real. Um, and some more web three words. Um, but it's fear, uncertainty, and doubt. So like along the lines of fear. And the fact that this is a conversation is really like it's like vulnerable. It's powerful because this is for real people go through like even the way I feel before I'm into something, like you know what I mean? That like it's a moment, it's just the right price. It's just like doubt for real and like is my art worth what I put into it and it always is. You know what I mean, but like you said, it's unlearning. Um, just like a lot of what the industry kind of limited us to, um, or even being outside of the industry and being completely independent as artists, you know, and just the hurdles you have to climb to like get yeah, paid to play or like book a venue and come out of pocket. Just the whole like an EP release, like you know, there's a lot that goes into just even launching in Web two, and so Web three is like yeah, the fear, the technology, the you know, just trying to innovate different communities, just the way that you're even learning the platforms and marketplaces and the lingo and like it's a big learning curve, you know. And so that unknown really and just that, you know, um passion that we have for our art, you know, that's something that we're giving to the world. Like that's something that we're actually releasing, you know, like actual release of that. It's like an emotional release for me, or it's just that release of something that I need to put out into the world and now this is a way to digest it, whether it's a message, whether it has, um, you know, purpose within the communities and, like, utility. And there's so many ways to really evolve, like, what value you need and, like, what you're getting out of something. Because it is, like, a monetary thing, but it's also a connection, you know. Um, even this example, I actually, um, one of my collectors I met at, um, in Miami, and then so now they came to Denver and they're hosting one of our events, and it's just, like, a longer term collaboration where it's like more of this level of appreciation, I think, than anything, because it's like people can buy the 99 cent, you know, Apple. <laughs> and it's like, great, now I have like a millions of pennies, you know, from that. <laughs> it's like literally just uh, fractions of what we deserve, you know, from the efforts it takes to market and to, you know, really be consistent as an artist. So I feel like NFTs really allow creativity to be involved with the process more than like marketing, like you are marketing yourself through your music, like you don't have to do the most and like, it's just a more natural and more authentic process, honestly. So, yeah. <laughs> this is so awesome. It's great to be all the time. Yeah, I really very much so appreciating this. But, um, yes, you mentioned something that I kind of want to touch on a little bit. Being black, in America, as a musician, I think that we are all very much, really. And so, and you, you also talked about and touched on um, that knowing your value and, and knowing your, your your worth. And then, like, we have so much learning, unlearning that we have to do to put ourselves out there. And then, not only you know you go through that process and you put it out there, and it's out there, and you're like, oh my god, like. I'm just like one of like 500 million other musicians and their grandmothers, and I'm putting out more music, and you're trying to figure out like this, uh, 
Yeah. And establishing yourself work with, with your with the music. So I mean, I feel like you you are taking you're digging in there and you are taking something out and putting it out out there. And you're like, please like it. Why don't you like it? Why am I not famous? Am I famous? I don't know. Um, and, and there's just like so much that just goes into that. And so I think that it is so important um, as as like not only as a white black artist, as an artist, um, as a individual in this space, but knowing your value, sticking to it, and asking for what you deserve. I like. I mean, it might be different if you're like going into like some like court club and like, aren't you paying me a million dollars? I mean, like, hey, you know, maybe think about that. I mean, but who knows what what they're gonna do in 2025? That might mean after your class. But uh, I just think it's like so important to make sure that you know, like, if you're if you're creating something and your heart is in that, there isn't a price tag for that. And so you need to stick with that. You need to. Trust in that and trust if you feel good about it, stick to it, make it happen, trust in it because you are the only one that can tell me anything about it. It's good or not. Um, and so, with that, knowing yourself worth, being black in America, unlearning all this programming, um, and you know. Digging into the trenches of you and like bypassing all of that. What tips do you all have for success in that field? Think about that some more. All right, I'm liking the the program you're right? <laughs> one of my one of my favorite one of my favorite uh, artists um, is this guy named David Hands and. Uh, it's probably about seven or something now. And uh, two summers ago, three summers ago, I went to uh, Puzzle, Puzzle and Work, which is one of my favorite galleries in LA. And they you know, showed me around all these pieces. We had a show there. And there was a bowl of water that was on the wall. And then next to the bowl of water was a printout of an email. And it was being sold for $2.5 million. The bowl of water was a snowball that he made in 1985 that he tried to sell to this woman and she had to write an email back to him saying she couldn't buy the snowball because her accountant said he couldn't she couldn't insure it. It's the 2.5 million dollars a bowl of water and a piece of paper on the wall. But the intention what he was doing was he was connected to a project where he went outside and says, I'm going to make all these snowballs. I'm going to sell, I'm gonna sell snowballs for $100,000 each and see who will buy them. In 1985, and he sold damn near all of them. Then he made a book. Then 10 years, 20 years later, he put one of the snowballs he couldn't sell up for $2.5 million. And for me, I was in there like, looking around like, this is bullshit. <laughs> this is some bullshit, you know? And the woman was telling me, you know, she's like selling it up, like, yeah, you know, everything in here over 2.5. I'm looking around, I'm like, this is the craziest hustle of all time. <laughs> like, bro, it's the endless hustle. Like, I love hustle energy. So I'm in there, I'm really trying to figure it out. And I'm like, oh, this is the intention. Like, it's like, it's like playing out a story all the way to the end and being like, I played the story all the way to the end. What I went through to endure, whatever ridicule I got, whatever shit talking I went through, whatever somebody brought me some doubt, bad reviews about my heart being trash, da 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 da, whatever it may be. But y'all make me go through all that shit, that bowl of water cost $2.5 million. And I was like, God. So as far as going back to what Sassy was saying earlier about being in the industry and in the art industry and the music industry for such a long time and during so many different emotionally challenging moments in time, hitting rock bottom 10 times over, sleeping on motherfuckers' couches, going to Europe and doing shows and staying in hospitals, doing a whole bunch of stuff nobody know you're doing because you love it so much that you can never explain now this is why this song costs this much. And my intention 
the work I put in, and the things I've endured emotionally, and the people that have left my life, all kind of catastrophe that has come my way based on this thing that I see in my head that nobody can see, is why I'm going to continue to fight. And this space helps me put up that piece of that bowl of water and say $2.5 million is cool with me. He wasn't. Shit, you wasn't there in 1985 when I was outside in negative seven degrees, selling hundred thousand dollar snowballs, trying to figure out if that was even a thing. Like you know, so that's the thing, really. It's just the intention of being an artist that is so devoted into what it is you do that you can express your devotion, and then you can name it, you can price it, whatever, at whatever the fuck you want, if your belief is connected to what you made. You know, and I think that's. This is what this is the world we're in, and this is why we need to fall into this shit, you know, like all the way. Yes, I love that. Actually, intention definitely was something that resonated. Um, because I think it is important, like why is this worth so much? Like, is it gonna be something that sits on your wall and you're gonna look at it? Does you interact with it? Can you um, use it for material purposes? Like whatever the different even levels when it comes to like what you decide to give someone with your art. And so like even for, I think musicians like merchandise and clothes and things that are even, like that make you part of the brand, part of the community. Um, and it's not necessarily the brand, but the branding of it, you know? So is that something that people are getting as a result of your art? Is it actually giving back to bigger causes, you know? And that's something I always think about when it comes to, because we are passionate about you know, clothing, making custom one of one pieces so that when it fits in line with someone purchasing the song and then getting a piece of clothing that looks or it speaks to, you know, what the song is trying to portray. And, um, you know, from my experience, I was able to use, you know, this whole platform as a tool to give back. And, you know, creating a song around a certain theme or a revolution in Sudan specifically for me was about the Sudan revolution. So, you know, I created this song based on that. I was raising awareness while, you know, the song was being created and while things were happening. And then the collector actually was able to help contribute um, a portion of the proceeds from the NFT to the revolution and to the people that needed it. So it actually had real life utility and long term utility um, that's actually impacting communities and, you know, solving. Uh, the needs of that particular community. So, you know, I've done my research, working with the people, you know, I've traveled to Sudan, um, you know, um, first generation, so that was like very important to me to be able to get back and use the platforms and the privileges I do have to um, actually affect positive change and do what all of this circulation of wealth should be actually be distributed as well. So, um, I think that's an important aspect when it comes to pricing because. It's not just for you, it's something you're going to reinvest in the community, reinvest in other artists, reinvest in um, the communities that need it, that don't have access to the technology, you know? And so I feel like this could really be um, this perpetual circular process of giving back and um, continuing to make sure it reaches the ones that need it. And um, that way we can all, you know, elevate together if we help everyone up in the process. So I think there's a lot of opportunity for the community and, I think it goes beyond just the price tags. You know, if you can affect a hundred different lives, thousands of lives, then that amount is actually goes way farther than you know. And so, um, yeah, I mean, absolutely, I definitely agree with what has all been said. I think, in terms of like success, it's such a, a weird ass word, right? Uh, <laughs> because everybody has a different idea of success. So I might be like, I need four beds, I need a house. Uh, in Seattle, but also in mm -hmm. Portugal, mm -hmm. and then Seattle is expensive, so I need a tiny house built <laughs> in a little shed in Seattle, you know what I mean? But then a larger house in Utah, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, like, people have all kinds of different concepts of success, so I think that really evaluating what that is for you to actually approach the wealth in space, and like, for me, like, I think, definitely think about your intentionality with your work, because there's some so I won't put to the blockchain because I think about my collectors and who my collectors. Okay, so I'm trying to figure out like what the ecosystem is, given how many people actually have crypto and actually navigate with crypto, and also the smaller percentage that even dabble with NFTs, and then the even tinier percentage that think music has any utility in at any uh, scope in the NFT space. Some people still believe in music NFTs. 
Like, I see people on Twitter spaces all the time. I do hang out in empty Twitter a lot. Um, you know, people be like, so who, I don't understand it. And these are musicians or just random people. Be like, so why are you using NFTs? Why do why, why? Why would I do that if I could just listen? Like, why do you do anything? <laughs> why do you pay for who when you could just get it from the home? Like, I don't know. I don't know what you do with your time. You're like, it's like, why do you have to be all kinds of stuff? You could just hang out outside Best Buy. And watch whatever's on there. <laughs> you know, like you don't have to have a TV. I don't know what you do with your money. You know what I'm saying? So people ask all kinds of outlandish questions, you know what I'm saying? And for me, I just think it's like really thinking about why your art should move the way that it does, like how it impacts people, just like everyone wants to say. I price my, my music with the intentionality, you knowing that I did go to school for music, you know that I have studied, you know that I have poured my money, my blood, sweat, my tears. Parents put money into it. I always put money into it. I give hell of money to other people who don't give a damn about me anymore. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just put so much money out there. So now I, I tell people, like, this is nice. Like, I'm finally getting paid back a little bit of what I put in. And this is like, even if I made 20 million, I'm still getting back just a percentage of all the energy I put in into the world. And so, with that said, like, I think success depends on what you are looking for in your life. And for me, I just want to be the best person I can be. I want to be the best artist that I can be. I want to move people to feel when they hear my music. I want them to feel something when they see my art. And I make with the thought that I'm a scientific musician. I experiment a lot. I want to encourage people to experiment and have fun with music and not think it's something that they shouldn't have access to create. So I'm trying to push that forward in terms of what I'm creating as well. So I think when you think about success, we think about what's realistic. Will any of these things that we see in TV or whatever medium of media you're digesting presents as success as something that's like realistic or sustainable, or will it drown you? Like eventually, like you're just wanting these things that you cannot obtain or you cannot maintain. <laughs> and, and, and when you get it, will it be worth it? Because you won't have any friends now. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Or you might have other cars, but like, are you driving them all? Like, I don't understand. So, you know, just being reasonable, I think, getting into that like, space. Oh, and then lastly, I'll say, also, be patient with your sales. You know, I think that's one thing that's really important, too, because people really expect, like, I didn't sell out. I'm great once. You might have to wait that time. Like, what, also, like, how are you navigating the space? Are you showing up for other people? Because I'm not elected. I bought a lot of people's art, and I will continue to as I get more money and do my thing. I'll continue to onboard people, and I will continue to collect. And I will continue to show up to people's drop parties or whatever, the concerts, and keep showing up like I always have. So I think that's also a part of the ecosystem, too, is just having patience in that process. You got some good ass questions, Lee. I know. I'm like, I'm sorry. We've been here for four years. Open up the gates. Let the emotions out. Share with the world. You know, the full moon just hit last night. Oh, hell no. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, like you said, like I said, my thoughts are gone. So, like, you just let it out. Let it roll. I'm here for it. And so, you kind of mentioned. You know, we're talking about so we're talking about success. We're talking about value. Um, and you know, one thing I'm about there is that I, I do work for the super rare team. And one, be patient with yourself. Like, there are so many fucking artists <laughs> that message me. It's been a month. Why haven't I heard back? Be patient. Be patient. And I, oh, I didn't sell out immediately. Be patient. So there's that. The first piece of advice. The second piece of advice. Knowing your value, like, don't just put shit out there. Like, you know, you, you're just like cranking it out, like Annie on the farm, and like the 20s, just baby up, baby up, baby up, baby. Be patient. Just take your time and don't worry about so much that you just create content, yes, but works, pieces. They are valuable. This is not water. This is your creativity, your soul. Respect it. And do what makes you feel good inside. It's, this is not this is not a sprint. This is a marathon. You know, and so like take your time and hold on to your shit and respect it and you know put it out there for the world to see you at your finest. Not just you know, any 
in a park. I mean, sure, she's a diesel tractor trying to but you just, you know, maybe have your Tesla or, you know, be sophisticated. Um, and, you know, take your time, have a smooth ride, do what works. It will show. It shows. Like I said, I work at Tinker Road. It shows. It shows when you're just cranking stuff out, okay? Crank it from your heart when your heart is ready and take that time that it needs to. You know, it will make that happen. So, the many things happen, and you know, you see so much hype. You see, oh, Bitcoin prices are soaring. Oh, <laughs> there's this wave that got ready, but we can't. I'm gonna bail. I'm too late. I'm too early. I'm gonna do it. So, um, one question that I get a lot is that some folks feel as though that they miss out on this wave. And like, it's too late for them. It's too late to be in the metaverse. It's too late to be in web three. It's too late to make an piece that everybody knows about that. Honestly, from my perspective, you know, this is this is only this is only the beginning. You know, like like the real set has not even rolled in yet. You know, we are getting ready to ride. It's like you know, we're getting near yet. But I just wanted to know your opinions. Am I too late? I mean, obviously, I think we're all like we recognize that it's a new, it's still new, you know. What I mean, one way that's going to be like waves are, you know, ever flowing, like there's going to be more currents and more opportunities and more ways to grow and learn from it all the time. So, I don't think the first wave is it's not, I don't know, I, mean, I think it's we're still riding it. Like, where are we? What is this? This is moving so fast. Like, it's web three, you know what I mean? It's, Days and nights are running to each other, and it's just this like fire to create and fire to connect and fire to fly to Denver. And you know what I mean? It's just like this energy that um, it just allows you to want to dig deeper, you know, because you really do like to start to learn as you as you evolve with it. So I think it's evolving, you know, the next wave is going to be stronger. The next wave after that, like we're going to learn more, we're going to have more experience and more insights. So um, I think, you know. It's good many ways to come, you feel me? And so I feel like uh, no one's too late, you know. I think someone said, I'm not sure what the numbers are right now. So <laughs> but there was something over, uh, it's under a million um, followers have been paid. Is it? <laughs> you were like, I got that um, So, and if you think about that in the population of the world, of like, even just think a theoretical number, but like anything over 500,000 people. It's not that big, you know what I mean, for communities to people with crypto. And so it's still new, even just the aspects of crypto and even Apple Pay. And like, you know, we're still evolving, it's taking time to actually move into like digital currency and digital art and, you know, and then making it physical, making it a real life experience. So, you know, I think as it, as it evolves, you know, newer people will contribute new ideas and it's never too late to to be a part of, you know, this movement. So I think, yeah, it grows and it becomes more powerful, like, the more of us that are involved and are putting in, putting in work and efforts and education, and, you know, just even on the way money circulates, you know, it's just building financial systems for, you know, not systems, but decentralization <laughs> of our money, but end of our art, you know, and having the opportunity to, to know exactly what's going on in the blockchain. You know, I'm going to scan and like being everything being as transparent as it is. Um, you know, there's just ways to that's going to keep evolving. We can get new information and find ways to adapt. So, yeah, it's never too late. <laughs> I was gonna say, y'all wait as hell. <laughs> and if you haven't already made it, and you should stop. Uh, we were already overpopulated, but if you want to collect, come on down. <laughs> <laughs> Dropping NFTs, yeah, Macy's dropping NFTs, Pepsi drops. NFTs. I mean, like, I don't know what, when are we early going to be late? Like, for what? Like, for everybody to, to close down the banks? Okay, that'll never happen. Like, we'll, 
what are we waiting for? What are, you know, like in, in context to what you know, like there's time to still get in here. There's still time to make friends. I mean, and make build community and build collectors and build like artist communities and different things like that. I see people coming in all the time. I see people who are well established coming in, and people who never made music or never made art coming in. You know, and they're very, I don't know, fairly, <laughs> you know. And it, I guess it really depends on the intentionality of them to see how late or early you are. You know what I'm saying? Like, because I heard about NFTs like three years ago, maybe probably like 2018, when my friend Summer Watson, she's the first person to mention those letters to me. She works with Michael Johnson um, at Octu, for those who know who that is. Um, but I was like, I don't know those letters mean. I'm okay. I'm just going to tour until I die. So thanks for the advice. <laughs> I'm not going to get into that in your curriculum. I'm already on my death row. You know what I'm saying? So then I finally got into it, but I watched my friend Natasha from February of last year, jumping in September, it didn't make sense to watch You know what I'm saying? And now I work at a watching company, which is ironic. So, you know, but I still took my time to do the research. So, you know, yeah, do your own research. So I think like that's how you really determine the way you're building, it's just by doing your own research into, and following your gut into the space because. You can jump in right now and start making a bunch of stuff, but if you don't know what you're doing, you'll lose hella money in the process. You probably lose your seed phrase. You probably just tweet it out. You know, I have no idea. <laughs> so you know, like you really have to pace yourself, do your own research, and figure out how it's going to work best for you to get into the ecosystem. You know, with the, with the I feel like y'all touched on that. Like, no, I don't got nothing to say. I just, man, I just show up. I'm supposed to show up, man. And I, and I put my whole heart into it. And they won't be in there no more. I leave them, motherfucker, man. Go somewhere else. All right. Well, thank you all so much for joining us. And I just wanted to say that Jesse and to me, Jesse, we're going to have to next year. But uh, they're going to be performing at the Temple After Party, the Earth Beats Party, Sunday night. So. Oh my God, this year's gonna be so lit. This is gonna be so lit. So, but thank you, thank you so much.